pleased that AQA A-Level Environmental Science predicted papers and this close to the exams, they're great tools for practice and revision. This year, they actually also come with a free video walkthrough featuring A-star essay examples and in-depth analysis showing you exactly how to interpret the questions and structure your answers to reach the top bands. They are a fantastic tool for practice and exam preparation, but remember, obviously, they're only predictions, so make sure you revise the full specification to really be prepared. And most importantly, it can feel a little rough at this time of year, so do obviously make sure to take care of your mental health during revision. If you're doing your best, that is good enough. Now, I'm going to cover all papers in this video, so please do use the timestamps for what you need. Let's, of course, start with paper one. So starting with mineral extraction, make sure you understand both open cast and deep mining methods along with their environmental impacts. Revise the environmental impacts such as habitat loss, pollution and subsidence. You should also be confident discussing sustainability strategies such as resource substitution, recycling and land restoration after extraction. Next, we have changes to the cryosphere. The cryosphere includes all forms of frozen water, glaciers, ice caps, and permafrost. You'll need to revise the impacts of climate change on those systems, such as rising sea levels and feedback mechanisms, like the albedo effect. It's also important to know how these changes are monitored, including through satellite imagery, ice cores, and temperature records. For aquifers, understand how groundwater is stored in porous rocks, such as chalk and sandstone. You'll need to revise issues like over-abstraction, contamination and salt water intrusion, as well as how aquifers are sustainably managed and monitored. Moving on to air pollution and indicator species, know the major pollutants like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide and particulates and their effects. Be familiar with bioindicators such as lichens, which can help assess air quality and know how we monitor pollution using both biological and electronic methods. In terms of oil extraction, review each stage of the process, exploration, drilling, extraction and transport. Understand the environmental impacts, including oil spills and habitat damage, and be prepared to explain mitigation strategies, such as double hull tankers, blowout preventers, and spill response procedures. You should also revise the chi-squared test, which is used for comparing observed and expected results, especially with categorical data. Make sure you're comfortable with the steps, calculating expected values, applying the formula, and comparing your results to the critical value. Heavy metal pollution is another topic to cover. Focus on sources like industry, mining and waste disposal and understand the impacts, particularly bioaccumulation and toxicity. You'll also need to revise method methods of control, including phytoremediation, filtration and legal regulation. For energy efficiency, know the main methods for reducing energy waste, such as insulation, LED lighting and efficient appliances. Be ready to calculate efficiency using the input and useful output formula and understand the wider environmental benefits. When revising climate change, focus on the causes, greenhouse gas emissions, deforestation and agriculture, and the effects like extreme weather, ocean acidification and species migration. You should also know key solutions, including renewable energy, carbon capture technology and international agreements such as the Paris Accord. Finally, don't forget the carbon and nitrogen cycles. For the carbon cycle, revise processes like photosynthesis, respiration, combustion, and decomposition. For the nitrogen cycle, understand nitrogen fixation, nitrification, denitrification, and assimilation. Be aware of how human activity affects both, such as fossil fuel use and deforestation for carbon, and fertilizer use and sewage for nitrogen. Keep your revision focused and make sure you understand not just the facts, but the connections between these processes and the environmental issues they relate to. Okay, next up, we're moving on to, of course, paper two. So again, topics we are predicting. So do make sure to cover anything you're concerned about whilst revising. Let's start with biomes. Make sure you understand the characteristics of major global biomes, such as tropical rainforests, deserts and tundra. You should know their climate conditions, biodiversity levels and productivity along with the threats they face. 
like deforestation and desertification and how we can conserve them. Oceanic islands are another topic our teacher has predicted. These unique ecosystems have high levels of endemism but are extremely vulnerable. Be ready to discuss evolutionary processes such as adaptive radiation using examples like Darwin's finches and revise key threats including invasive species, habitat destruction and climate change. Next is biomimetics, the study of nature-inspired innovations in design and technology. Think of examples like shark skin swimwear or bird-inspired aircraft designs. It's important to understand how protecting biodiversity is vital for discovering future biomimetic solutions. Then we have pollinators and pesticides, where we suggest that you revise the essential role pollinators play in ecosystems and agriculture. Understand how pesticides, particularly neonicotinoids, affect them and learn about strategies to protect pollinators, such as habitat corridors, organic farming and stronger regulations. Fishing is another key topic. Know the differences between sustainable and unsustainable methods. Revise problems like overfishing, bycatch and habitat destruction from techniques like trawling. Learn how issues are being addressed through quotas, marine protected areas and selective fishing gear. You'll also need to be confident with measuring humidity and using transects. Understand how to measure humidity with hygrometers and wet and dry bulb thermometers and how to use line and belt transects to study distribution patterns in ecosystems. Be able to choose the right method for different investigations for indirect evidence in ecological sampling. Know how to identify species presence using droppings, tracks, nests and calls. This is especially important when studying elusive wildlife. These methods are often used alongside camera traps or acoustic monitors. Spearman's rank is a statistical test used to measure the correlation between two ranked variables. It's particularly useful for ecological data like comparing light intensity to plant height. You should be confident calculating it and interpreting the result, whether it's a positive, negative or no correlation. Next, when comparing human activity with natural processes, revise how things like deforestation, mining and construction compare with natural forces like storms, erosion and volcanic eruptions. Be ready to analyse the scale, speed and long term effects of each. Then you should also make sure you understand the difference between intensive and extensive aquaculture. Intensive methods involve high inputs and controlled conditions like salmon farming, while extensive systems are more natural, like shrimp ponds. Be sure to revise the environmental impacts, waste, disease, escapees and habitat loss. And finally, review sustainable forestry management. Key methods include selective logging, replanting, rotation cycles and FSC certification. Understand how forestry can be managed to balance ecological health, economic value and social responsibility. Make sure to revise these areas thoroughly and remember it's not just about knowing the content but understanding how to apply it to real world environmental scenarios and exam questions which is where our predicted papers can really help. Right those are our AQA A-level environmental science predictions. Best of luck with your revision and of course best of luck with your exam.